everyone, Comrade Sputnik of a back in the house, and this is another episode of Ushanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. And in today's video we're going to talk about chess. We're going to talk about Shahmat. One of my viewers, Shantner Mohanty6678, was quite persistent asking the question, could you please make a video on why chess was so important in the Soviet Union? But before we answer that question, let's have a short lesson of Russian language. Urok Ruskova Yazika. Shahmaty. Shahmaty. This is how we say chess in Russian. Shahmaty. The word Shahmaty is very interesting because I always believed that it's a combination of two words. Shah, which means check, and Mat, which means mate. Checkmate. Shahmaty. Just in case I decided to look it up and I found out that Shahmaty came from Persian language and Shahmat means shake died. So when you win the game, you have a check, mate, it means Shah died. And if we go back to the question why chess was so important in the Soviet Union, it's actually, it was important for the government and it was popular among population. But I don't think I would say that chess were important for everyday person in the Soviet Union. So let's talk about the important part of the chess in the Soviet Union. First of all, we need to mention that Vladimir Lenin was a big fan of chess. He played a lot, he was extremely competitive, and he even managed to play chess while being uh, in prison. We even had a painting of Lenin playing chess. And then I realized, you know, I never seen any other Soviet leader portrayed playing chess. I never seen Stalin. Never seen Khrushchev, never seen Brezhnev, Andropov, Chernenko, even Gorbachev. None of those leaders ever were pictured playing chess, only Lenin. So Shahmaty chess started gaining its popularity in the Soviet Union since 1924, when the government began the policy of promoting chess and spending money building chess clubs for adults as well as for children. So that's when more and more people started playing chess. It's hard to say for sure what was the real reason behind such a hard push of chess in the USSR, but probably it was the one of the tools uh, to show ideological supremacy of the socialism. Because like, look, since the Soviet Union or Russia became socialist, our people became so much smarter and we win all the championships in chess. And of course, chess as sports is extremely cheap. You don't need to build large stadiums, invest a huge amount of money. You just open, hey, this is the room, there's the chess boards, go ahead, guys, play. Still, considering the size of the country and the size of the population of the Soviet Union, Soviet government spent a lot of money promoting chess over the years. And this investment paid off handsomely because by the late 70s and in the 80s, Soviet chess players dominated the world of chess and I grew up in the 80s, and it was actually boring to watch World Chess Championships because it was a competition between two Soviet um, grandmasters, Kasparov and Karpov. So it was like, doesn't matter who win, Soviet Union already won. So for me, it was no excitement, like, okay, we already got gold regardless who wins. So this is why I think... Chess were so important for the Soviet government was just another tool to promote the socialist way of life, just like space achievements, just like sports achievements, and I guess chess you can consider it being a sport. And now let's talk about how popular chess were in the Soviet Union and why. Well, obviously chess were extremely popular and that fact was even reflected in the socialist realism art. You can find a lot of paintings that depict, I think it's the word, chess games in different situations like this 1951 uh, picture called Young Chess Player. So here you see a young pioneer totally dominating his grandpa because grandpa's eyes are like bulging while parents and a young sister are watching proudly how good their son at chess. Or this 1955 picture called Family Time where father and the son are playing chess and mother is always is busy with dishes. Or this 1958 art called Chess Game where two friends, looks like uh, teenagers, playing chess. And this is what I did a lot when I was a teenager. Just in the evening we'll get together, we'll play 
couple of games of chess and then go outside for a walk. But before we continue, I would like to apologize. I kept on saying chess were popular. That's the result of my Russian English language cross-pollination, my mind. Because in Russian language, chess is a plural, shakhmati. And I'm thinking that way in the English chess. And I kept on saying chess were popular. They're supposed to be chess was popular. Am I sneaking again? So I apologize. So of course one of the main reasons why chess was so popular in the Soviet Union was heavily government involvement and investment. But I believe another important reason why chess was so popular is just we had not much entertainment in the Soviet Union. There was not much to watch in TV, not many interesting movies to go to see in the movie theater. So people kept entertained by playing chess. And even before the Soviet Union collapsed, Perestroika opened the floodgates and Soviet people's minds and hearts were captured by the Western entertainment industry. So soap operas, movies, magazines, all that killed chess almost instantly. And now I'm gonna say something that may surprise some of you, but I don't think, I don't believe that chess was the most popular game in the Soviet Union. And it's just my gut feeling based on my personal experience It'll be kind of interesting to do a deep research on this topic. Someone can get probably a PhD research on the most popular form of games and entertainment in the USSR. But I don't remember chess being on every corner. And guess what? While working on this story, I posted a survey on my Russian YouTube channel. And out of 88 votes, 40% agreed that cards were the most popular game in the Soviet Union. Second place, dominoes at 38% then chess 13 percent and checkers 10 percent once again it's my personal opinion but i believe playing cards was the number one activity when people had time to kill like you're on the train or they just want to hang out with friends and they will play cards and i believe the most popular card game in the soviet union was called fool durak and that's what me and my friends did a lot in the village i have even slides of us playing cards so if it's a rainy day you can't go outside go fishing or swimming you just stay indoors and you play cards for hours and i just looked it up our durak card game is similar to popular bavarian card game called shafkap sheephead so that's uh, pretty much the same thing second most popular game among the soviet people once again my opinion was dominoes number three was checkers shashki and only after that is once again it's my personal opinion was chess looking from a different angle i would say that cards dominoes and checkers were mostly blue collar form of entertainment while chess was more kind of like a white color form of entertainment for example in my family which i consider blue collar family i was the only one who played chess but i was a nerd and eventually i became an engineer so i became a white color guy but my dad was really good in checkers and one of the reason he always played checkers at work during the lunch break or during the smoke break they'll gather together and they just play checkers and he was really good i learned how to play chess pretty late when i was 15. i had a new friend valera and he was hardcore involved into chess and his family was white color mother was a teacher father was soviet officer so he learned to play chess from early age and then he made me interested in chess and he taught me how to play and that's how I got involved into chess play and then I purchased my own board. And if you follow my channel, Valera was the guy who eventually got into the military college and became an officer of anti-aircraft division. But instead of going into Germany or Hungary to protect Soviet Union skies, he ended up going to West Ukraine in the middle of nowhere. So he was one of the guys who really got screwed. I guess I can say that by the collapse of the Soviet Union. And on this photo you can see my brother Tom with my chess board. This photo was taken in 1996 when he was 10 and I just came back from my very first trip to America and I brought him that cool transformer toy. If you read my book American Diaries 1995 you might recognize this toy. I purchased it at local Kmart. The price was $50, but I managed to get it for free. So I was really happy because working on the farm and making $5 an hour, buying a toy for 50 bucks was really, really expensive. So on this photo, my brother is posing with my original chessboard that my parents purchased me. 
and it was kind of smaller size wooden figures. Later when I became a student of Kiev Polytechnical Institute and got a nice stipend of 50 rubles per month, I purchased myself way nicer chessboard with plastic figures and I think it was like 14 rubles, so expensive. Never mind the vodka bottles. Unfortunately, my brother never got interested in chess, so during one of my visits to Ukraine, I found that board and I brought it back here to Michigan. So once I learned how to play chess, I started playing all the time. So if I go and visit one of my friends, they'll be like, hey, you wanna play a game or two of chess? Let's do it. And then we may do homework together or we just go for a walk or whatever, or uh, my friends come to my place, we will play chess as well. So I was playing at least three, five games every week. We even played chess in school during the breaks between classes. So our classes were 45 minutes, then you have 15 minute break. So instead of running around or doing any other stuff, we will just play chess. One of my friends had this cool, like a pocket chess book that you open up and inside have a chess board and with little pockets and you move figures just like little plastic uh, pieces and you just you know, remove it, put it in a new pocket, and we use that to play chess a lot. And of course, I'm not talking about the whole class playing chess. It was probably three or four of us nerds that like to do that during the break. I also remember one of my friends having this type of a pocket chess board. It's really tiny, and in order for the pieces to stay in place, you see those little tiny holes. That's kind of like using almost pieces like a pins. Here's another pin type chess board. So this once again made for people who travel and they don't want their pieces shift around if you're on a train or bus. So this way you just kind of lock them in place and you have a storage drawers for your figures. They also had magnetic chess pieces like shown on this picture. It's called Shachmati Magnitne, magnetic chess. So once again it was made for people who like to play chess while traveling, mostly on the trains and pieces were really tiny and of course magnets to help them to stay in place. Remember I mentioned that checkers, shashki, were also very popular among the Soviet people. So here you have this nice combination, universal board and pieces. So one way you flip, you play chess, you flip the other way and you can play Russian checkers. When you think about life in the Soviet Union, you may think right away about different shortages in retail, long lines and so on. But I don't recall ever shortages of chess games and I don't remember ever long lines of people who wanted to buy a chess board. They manufactured plenty of those. They even had oversized chess board with large chess pieces for people to play on the beach. I never saw it in person, but there's plenty of photos. Remember I mentioned earlier that I recalled only Lenin being a big fan of chess, but I stumbled on this photo of General Secretary of Communist Party of Soviet Union, Leonid Brezhnev, but he's not playing, he's just watching a chess game between Marshals Grechka and Malinovsky. This photo was taken sometimes in the 60s. Remember I also mentioned that chess were a predominantly white color people game, but I also stumbled on this photo where people play chess in some beer hall. There's even a photo of Soviet officers playing chess while taking a break between the fights during the World War II. Not surprisingly, chess appeared quite often in Soviet movies, like in this most popular Soviet-era TV series called 17 Mnavenie Vesny, 17 Moments of Spring, where you could see the main character, Soviet spy Stirlitz, playing chess. But the most famous chess episode was probably in the Soviet comedy 12 Chairs, 12 Stulyev. So the main character of this movie, Astap Bender, who is a swindler, in order to get money out of people, he organizes this paid competition where he plays on multiple boards at the same time. And of course he knows how to play chess, but he's not really good. And this movie has this famous phrase that became classic, Grossmeister жертвует ферзя, so Grossmeister is sacrificing the queen, which is, they were all astounded because they thought it was some kind of slick move, but the guy just had no idea how to play chess well. So now if you do something stupid, people might tell you, hey, Grossmeister жертвует ферзя. And just like in the English language, in the Russian language we have a similar expressions about being a pawn in someone else's game. And usually every large city had a special place where would chess lovers will gather to play chess. Usually it would happen in park. For example, in Kiev, the uh, location was Shevchenka Park downtown. And that's what usually retirees will get together, sit on benches and they play chess for hours. As I mentioned, there was not much entertainment going on in the Soviet Union, especially for retirees. 
So if you want to have some fun and hang out with your buddies, you go play chess in the park. And if you watch Queen's Gambit on Netflix, I enjoyed that show immensely. I wanted to rewatch it again. They had an episode when she was in Russia and she found the park and she played chess with the local players. And this is one of my favorite photos. Just it shows how hardcore were some chess players to play chess outdoors in the winter when it was snowing. I would much rather play chess on the beach, although to tell you the truth, personally, I had never seen anyone playing chess on the beaches in Kyiv in the summer. People usually just tan, play cards or swim. I don't recall ever seeing something like that, but there's a plenty of pictures of people playing chess on the beach. I found this photo kind of hilarious. People playing chess Gopnik style, squatting. Another chess photo that I liked so much, this was taken in one of the Baltic Republics. So this is the people in line waiting to register their marriages and guys are killing time playing chess while brides are snoozing. Here's another interesting Soviet era photo that has a chess board in the picture. And of course, you're probably wondering what the heck is going on with this room. Why is it round shape? And no, it's not a submarine. And this was a temporary housing in the far north made from the tanker train cars. And it was so temporary that people still live in those homes right now. Fun, but not really fun fact. Soviet government banned playing chess on all research stations down in Antarctica because back in 1959 on the station called Vostok, one of the Soviet scientists killed another guy with the axe after losing game of chess. Many Soviet schools had chess clubs and you could see a lot of photos of pioneers playing chess. But interestingly enough, I went to three different schools in Kyiv, Soviet Ukraine, and none of our schools had chess clubs, or at least I wasn't aware of one. And of course, every Soviet city had a, at least one chess club, Shachmanek Klub. Like on this photo, you see it centrally, Shachmanek Klub SSSR, Central Chess Club of the USSR. Well, my friends, I think it's all I can tell you about chess, Shachmat in the Soviet Union. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it, post a comment, and if you really like my work, you can always support me with a super thanks. Thank you so much for watching Shanka Show. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.